The Volvo S60R with 300 horsepower and four-wheel drive, a racy chunk of Swedish steel. The engine is as strong as a bear. We discovered that two years ago at the track test. But how much of a sports car is the S60R really? We compare it to a Volvo touring car. The PSR S60. It has already achieved three class wins in 24 hour races and is one of the most successful race cars on the Nürburgring's North Loop. Under the bonnet is a 2.5 litre five cylinder engine with open intake ducts. The Grand Prix stretch of the Nürburgring, 8 a.m. The temperature outside, four degrees. This is where the fraternal duel between the mass production sports car and the touring car will take place. Wolfgang Kaufmann is no newcomer to race driving. He'll drive the production Volvo. Uli Andre is at the wheel of the racing Volvo and has already clocked thousands of kilometers in his touring car. They'll drive the Grand Prix circuit of the Nürburgring, 5,148 meters of wet tarmac. Each will have one lap racing against the clock. The mass production Volvo is up first. On a dry surface, the S60R can reach 100 kilometers per hour in 5.7 seconds. The four-wheel drive system ensures it barely loses time even in the wet. Nonetheless, the weather here packs a punch. It's slippery here because of the damp conditions. There are advantages in terms of traction compared with a car which only has front-wheel drive. The S60R contains a Haldex coupling. As soon as the front wheels lose grip, power is transferred to the rear wheels, so the production Volvo's 300 horsepower are divided across all four wheels. But this advantage in traction is only useful coming out of tight hairpins. On the other hand, this car has the standard equipment of an ordinary four-piston Brembo brake system and ordinary production tires. Rain and the cold track take the summer tires to their limit. Street tires must have certain characteristics. On one hand, they must be durable and easy to handle when pulling off. On the other hand, they must have a sporty performance. There will always need to be a compromise on steering precision and transverse acceleration. How quickly a tire is able to go through a corner depends on its composition. Main components are rubber, carbon, carbon black and silicon. Since racing tires only need to last a few laps, the treads compound can be significantly softer than street tires. This allows the car better grip on the track. The S60R's chassis is electronically adjustable. Available settings include comfort, sport and racetrack. More and more manufacturers are following this trend. Sensors check the driving conditions 500 times per second and set the level of the shock absorbers according to the situation. This minimizes body movements. You'll see it here quite clearly. We have the electronically adjustable chassis as standard in this model, but it's also considerably heavier than a race car. Wolfgang Kaufmann has 1,700 kilos to drive around the track, and every kilo costs time. The S60R heads towards Hatzenbach turns. The fastest section of the track is coming up. On the downhill stretch, the 2.5-litre turbo engine reaches 180 kilometers per hour, then heavily on the brakes and through the last chicane. We're accelerating up the home straight. The S60R comes in at three minutes, one second. The only thing they have in common is that they both have five-cylinder engines with roughly the same output. The Model R has 300 horsepower, the race car has 320, but we have an induction engine while the S60R has a turbo. The S60R has a turbo motor. 
The racing Volvo has less torque, 300 newton meters at 5,800 revs per minute. The production car has more pull at lower revs, 400 newton meters, even at 1,950 revs per minute. On the other hand, the PSR Volvo weighs only 1,080 kilos. Getting in is rather more difficult than in a production car. First of all, we have to get around the safety cage if there's an insurance policy, but it also makes the bodywork stiffer and therefore the car becomes more responsive. The numerous struts make the whole car twist less and respond more precisely to the steering. The balance of weight must be correct so that the car can take corners as neutrally as possible and be more easily adjustable. The driving position is also very different, almost on top of the B-pillar. The seat is pushed towards the middle, so that adjusts the center of gravity. There's a long steering column to be able to steer more ergonomically. Here is the control for the sequential six-speed gearbox. To change up, you just need to pull, and push forwards to change down. That selects the next gear up or down for you. The electronics take over the clutch control. Gear changes take less than 25 milliseconds, which means the power flow is only briefly interrupted. Our tires, chassis and aerodynamics create the biggest differences in the speed through turns. The aerodynamic output helps us a lot, particularly in fast corners. Two minutes, 20 seconds. With wet weather tires, Uli Andre thunders out of Hatzenbach. The lead over the Volvo S60R is five seconds. Full throttle towards the NGK chicane. The last corner into the home straight and the racing Volvo still has 20 seconds to beat the time set by the S60R. You can see it, the traction on a front-wheel drive car, where we were superior at the start. With a turbo engine, we have more torque in comparison to an induction engine, but otherwise the race car is superior. Despite almost the same engine performance and four-wheel drive, in the end, the road car is 13 seconds behind. It's a combination of weight, the speed in turns, braking points and how I come out of the turns. So actually the racing car is better overall on the racetrack, but on the road it wouldn't be able to keep up with the production car. On a dry, warm track, the difference would have been even more glaring.